I'm now going to give a broad overview of responsive web design. And we're going to start by going back in time, before 2010. For many years, there was this common belief that people who used mobile were on the go, they were time poor, they had small or low bandwidth. And what that led to is that mobile websites were often seen as radically different to desktop websites. So we end up doing stripped down versions of desktop websites for mobile. And what this meant is that often website owners who were running mobile websites had to maintain often two websites, a desktop or a mobile, or in some cases had to maintain multiple versions of their sites. For many website owners, these complex solutions just weren't possible. And that was due to things like cost and technology, maintainability. What we all needed was a simple solution, one that didn't involve serving different websites to different devices. In 2010, Ethan Marcotte coined the term responsive web design, and in doing so, changed the whole way many people started to build websites. So rather than build separate mobile and desktop websites, you can suddenly build websites a single site that adapts to suit any device regardless of screen size or orientation. And the key principle here is one website, multiple layouts. Now Ethan Marcotte defines three responsive web design principles. The first one is a flexible grid-based layout. Now what this means is that your layout should be able to adapt and change to matter what different device widths are available. The second principle is that you should have flexible images and media. So this means that your images and movies, etc., should also be able to shift and change to suit the needs of different devices and widths. And the third principle is the use of CSS3 media queries. And we'll be using these three principles throughout the rest of our course. Another topic that often confuses people is the difference between responsive web design and adaptive web design. Responsive web design came out in 2010. Adaptive web design was launched in 2011. And there are many principles that are still are quite similar between the two of them. They both primarily agree that progressive enhancement should be at core. The one difference is adaptive web design is considered slightly broader in scope. So it takes into account markup, CSS, JavaScript, and assistive, uh, assistive technology support. Progressive enhancements where you focus on the content first. It's about making that content as widely available to as many devices, to, to, to regardless of bandwidth, etc. And then building on top of that. So if you wanted to put in some very sexy JavaScript, you make sure the content works first, the site will function fully, and then JavaScript is added for those devices that can support it. It's building upwards rather than downwards. Mobile first is about designing the entire experience for small screen devices before going to widescreen devices. Now this practice forces everyone involved in the process to focus on core content and functionality. Often it's just a simple lack of space in small screen forces everyone to think about what's really critical in that layout. Conversely, if you plan and design for widescreen first, at some point you're going to have to force this design into narrow screen. And I've known from personal experience this is a very unpleasant experience. So ideally, mobile first should be part of every phase of the project. So that includes even the first phase where you're sketching ideas these days we'll often sketch in narrow screen first. When we're wireframing our prototype, we'll often wireframe and prototype in narrow screen first, even if we end up doing a widescreen version as well. And definitely during the design phase, narrow screen should be done before the, the widescreen. Finally, even the HTML and CSS should take on the mobile first principles. A simple practice of using media queries only for widescreen rather than narrow screen means that older mobile devices that don't support media queries get serviced properly. So mobile first is a practice that should be taken throughout the entire project. What are breakpoints? Well breakpoints are that point in the layout where the layout changes or adapts. And a quick example of that would be where you have a three column layout widescreen 
and then as you move the browser window in, the layout jumps and changes to a two-column layout. That point where it changes is called the breakpoint. Breakpoints are controlled using CSS3 media queries. Now we've done a bit of work on them so far, but we're doing a lot more of that soon. In the past, many people used to use common breakpoints, such as 320, 480, 600, 768, etc. And they're all based on devices. The problem with this approach is it's not maintainable. There are always new devices coming on the market, especially in the tablet range. So ideally, we should set our breakpoints based on the needs of our content. And that means the text. Is a line length readable? How does the navigation work? All of this should be done based on the content, not based on devices. Devices change, content is important. Another question that's commonly asked is how many breakpoints should you have? Well, some uh, layouts may only need two breakpoints, whereas others may need multiple breakpoints, or what some people are starting to call a series of little tweak points. So you could have something like the layout grid having three major breakpoints, but your navigation may need just two or five. Another question that's commonly asked is how do you test breakpoints? Now, there are a range of great tools out there that allow you to look at your layout at a variety of different widths. The problem is that you can fall into that trap of becoming device focused again. Now these are a range of tools out there including the Responsinator and ScreenFly and they are, as I said, very good. We've often used them to show clients proof of concept. But the real danger is that everyone starts focusing on saying, well this layout needs to be tweaked for the iPad rather than how is this content working um, in each of these layouts. Focusing on the content rather than the device. So how do you test? Well, a simple way is just simply to pull your browser window in and out and see where the layout starts to break. That's your first breakpoint. And instead of thinking about the whole layout, maybe you should start thinking about where different aspects of the layout break. As I said, your navigation may break in entirely different places to where your layout grids may need to break.